Hello Six Formers and welcome to our last um, topic in C11, the acids and bases topic. Last video of that, it's been a long old topic so I'm quite happy as I'm sure you all are. These are the specification points, this is called neutralisation, I think it's going to be quite an easy one for us because A, it's the same name as a unit in Year 7 science, and B, there's only two specification points we're covering, they're both quite experimentally uh, grounded. So, first thing we need to do is to find what a titration curve is. A titration curve is what you'd get if you took the, if you added uh, alkali a little bit at a time to some acid or vice versa, and measured the pH each time you added a little bit. You can see that it slowly increases. The pH slowly increases as the uh, the acid reacts with the alkali, and then eventually. In this case, case at 25 centimeters cubed added, the alkali has completely neutralized the acid, and then there's a very steep section to the graph going up through to the end of the graph. Uh, we call the middle of this steep section the equivalent equivalent point, and it's the pH at which we have the pH in the middle of the change between the acid and the alkali. So the point where we change from having any alkali, having any uh, having acid in the pot to having alkali in the pot. Um, so some important things to make sure we include when sketching one of these, which we have to do quite a lot. And we'll have to sketch these for start for titrations between strong acids and strong bases, strong acids and weak bases, weak bases and weak acids and strong bases, and weak bases and weak acids. I'm going to show you each picture individually so you can get that clearer. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got the starting pH right. So if you're starting from acid, if it's a strong acid, you need to be about one. Weak acid around four or five. Strong base about. If you're starting from a strong base, which means you'll have the mirror image of the graph I just showed you, you'll have uh, fourteen, about fourteen for your first for your strong base, and about eight or nine for your weak base. You'll probably have to write those numbers on. End point, obviously, just pick it out of that list. It's because at the end of the titration, you're only going to have strong base or strong acid or whatever it is that you're, you're adding to the first thing. Equivalence point is very important. If you've got strong acid, strong base titration or a weak acid, weak base titration, the equivalence point will be about, will be exactly seven. And for the others, it will be those values that I've listed. And the slope is very important. I'm going to show you the slope now. So for strong acid, strong base titration, you have a very, very steep um, equivalence point. The equivalence point here is marked on in the wrong position to, to fool you, but for this graph which I've modified it is actually 7. As you can see 7 is in the middle of the steep section of the graph. For this one weak acid, strong, a weak base and strong acid, we start off with a weak base we finish below 1 so we know we're adding a strong acid and the equivalence point you can see is just below well probably about or just below 5. Um, you'll notice that the, weak, uh, the pH decreases quickly at first then slows down but it's a much more gradual uh, slope and means we have a shorter steep section than we do with a strong acid strong base titration which is important. Here we have a weak acid going to strong base titration so we started at a pH of, a pH of around uh, well, just below 4. When we're finishing up at 14 you'll notice we increase quite quickly at the start, then we slow up, then we start increasing quick, then we start increasing quickly again, we have a short uh, equivalent, short uh, steep section, the middle of which is the equivalence point, which is at 8.5 in this one. And here is a weak acid with a weak base, we've got uh, ethanoic acid with ammonia, and you can see there's not really a steep section at all to speak of, so this titration would be useless because there's not a firm point where we change from having acid to having base. And that's what I want to talk about now. The point, the equivalence point is really, really important because it's the point where you're changing from acid to base quite quickly. And indicators have a certain range they change over. Okay, so here are three indicators on here. I've got at the bottom methyl orange, you can see it starts off ready orange and finishes yellow. And that changes around this region here, so that's probably about four to six. They do tell you this in the exam. Here we've got bromothymol blue, starts off yellow and goes to blue, and that changes around 7. And at the top we've got phenolphthalein, which starts off colourless and goes pink, and that changes around that 9 to 10 region. So, you want to choose your indicator whose turning point is in the middle of the steep section, because you can see, 
if I didn't choose the right uh, indicator here, the right indicator here is to choose is phenolphthalein because it's the steepest section of the graph. But if I chose this indicator, the, it could change over this range, this whole massive range of pHs, this whole massive range of volumes. And if I'd chosen methyl orange, it'd be changing almost instantly and not really changing over a very finite point. We want a very distinct end point. Okay. Final thing to discuss is the enthalpy of neutralization. The enthalpy of neutralization is defined as the enthalpy change when an aqueous acid reacts with an aqueous base to form one mole of water under standard conditions. Now, that seems quite a strange definition. Why not say one mole of aqueous acid reacting with one mole of aqueous base? And this is fine. Saying one mole of H plus ions reacting with one mole of OH minus ions to uh, forms of water is absolutely fine. However, the reason we use one mole of water as our measuring stick is because sometimes you have diprotic acids like uh, sulfuric acid. So you need to make sure, we need to make sure that we're only forming one mole of water to keep it a, uh, a fair measure of how acidic something is. And in actual fact, for every strong acid and strong be strong acid strong base reaction, the enthalpy change is about the same. It's exactly the same, in fact, because the H plus and OH minus are completely associated. So providing you have them in the right concentrations is the same reaction. You're not worried about these spectator ions. It becomes different when you have weak acids or weak bases because in order for the well, the weak acids particularly, because in order for the reaction to happen, you first have to break the bond between the H plus and the weak acid molecule. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. See you on Wednesday.